Hi, I'm Michaela with TechWise Academy. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite robots and we're going to be talking about what we can do with it, some of the different programming blocks and how to connect it. So this is a Spiro. It is a Spiro Bolt more specifically. It is one of my absolute favorite robots. These are really durable. They can go into water. We paint with them sometimes. They can be free driven, they can be coated. So I love the possibilities with this little robot. So I will show you a little bit about how to use it and we will go from there. So I'm using an Android tablet today and I'm gonna turn the screen on, unlock it. And then I already have this app let me see if I can get it. There we go. I already have this app already downloaded. It is for Android and for iOS. So you are go to either your Apple Store or your Google Play Store and you'll be able to download the Spiro EDU app. It's got a blue background with a, what I call a white Spiro ghosty. So we'll go ahead and open that one up. Awesome, it is now loaded. So then what we're going to do is we need to make sure that we connect it to this specific Spiro. And this specific Spiro does have a code on it. It is a little bit hard to see just because it's gray on gray, but once you get the habit of finding it, knowing where to look, it becomes a lot easier. And what we're looking for is that white, let me see if I can get it so it's not glared, that white Spiro ghosty right there, directly underneath it and above this gray ball, this like movement ball. I don't think that it's going to be able to pick it up on camera, but there is a code under it. So the white Spiro Ghosty, it's going to say SB and a couple of numbers and letters. So mine says SBB657. So on the tablet, we're going to go to what I call a Spiro phone, which is going to be up in this corner. All right, trying to mess with the glares. We're going to pull up looking like this. And I'm going to press Spiro Bolt because that's the Spiro that I have. And it's gonna come up with all these different robots. So I need to find the one that says B657. So when I do that, I will go ahead and click on it. B657. When I do that, this is what the tablet will look like. And then Spiro should start to come alive here. Oh, perfect. Those purple lights mean that Spiro is alive. And that blue light on top of Spiro means that Spiro is active. So a couple of things that Spiro, we need to keep in mind with Spiro. So the first thing is on the, what I call the blue sidebar, which is over here. If you're holding the tablet a different way, then it will be down here. But this is the free driving screen. This is where we can drive it. We can change its light color, or I'm sorry, this is the changing its speed. This middle one. And then we can also change the brightness of its color. We can also change the color on top of its main light. And this one, so Spiro, I just turned its light to pink. See if Spiro wants to cooperate. Spiro can see in 360 degrees, so it can see every which way. So if I want it to go straight in front of me, I need to make sure that the aim is correct. And it's very simple to do that. All we need to do is click this little aim circle right down here and then Spiro will have a blue light on it blue lights facing the camera right now and I want the blue light to be facing me so it's kind of like the Spiro is looking at me so if this was if this blue light was Spiro's eye I need Spiro to be looking at me so I'm going to use the tablet and turn it so that the blue light is facing me if I go back to aim it's hard to see but the blue light is now facing me as opposed to facing the camera that way straight will be straight, right, left, and behind me. So that is our free driving screen. And our coding screen, we're gonna go to programs in the blue bar. And when I do that, there may be other programs that does look like this tablet has more programs. I'm gonna go through and add a new program. And I'm going to hit create just on this screen when this comes up. So, because it's asking if I want what type of program, and then it's asking what type of robot I'm using. And I want block based, and I want it to be a Spiro Bolt. So, I'll give it just a second to create my new program. It's going to come up with a block, it's an event. Events are when our code starts. So, this block right here, it says on start program. So, that means whatever is connected to this block, when I hit start, it will automatically do that. 
So a couple of the blocks that I wanted to point out, some of my favorite blocks, some of the ones I use more often than I don't. We've got a whole bunch of categories down here. So in the movement category, I'm going to open that up and I like to use the first movement block. It's gonna look like that. Now, if I hit start, my Spiro is not going to do anything because it's all got zeros in it. So this first one, this first zero, if I tap on it, it's going to be the direction that it's driving in. And I can change this. Now it will be driving to my right. If I change it this way, now it will be driving behind me. And if I change it this way, it would be driving to my left. So if I wanted it to go straight, I would put zero degrees. While we're on this screen, another helpful tidbit is if I click on this zero in here, I can actually type in a number that I want. So if I can't get it exactly the way I want, I can type it in and that is very helpful. Our second zero, so it says, on start program, roll straight at zero speed. A speed of zero isn't going to go anywhere. So if I click on this one, if I click on this one, I now have a speed bar, zeros at the bottom, and I can make it go all the way up to 255. That's as fast as it can go, and it is pretty fast. These little guys do zoom off pretty quickly. Same thing as our directions. I can click on this number. Right now it says 136. I can click on that number and I can type in my own speed. So I could do 136.5. If I wanted to be a little bit more specific, I can do decimal points here. So now my Spiro will roll straight or forward. I could also make it roll backwards right here without having to check my aim. But right, for right now I want it to go forward. So it says I will roll straight at a speed of 136.5 for zero seconds. Again, zero seconds is zero time, so it's not going to move. So if I press on this, I could have it drive for 1.5 seconds, one and a half seconds. So when I did this, my Spiro should go straight at a speed of 136.5 for one and a half seconds. And if I hit start, Spiro is trying to move, but I'm holding it, so Spiro can't actually move, but it did in fact move. And then it gives you a little graph up here so you can actually see that, hey, your Spiro went this way and then it turned and then it came back or maybe you were doing a different challenge and that would be helpful to see. So I'll go ahead and hit stop. Another of my favorite blocks is in the light section. We can have our Spiro change lights. So I can have it turn, let's do light blue. See if I can get that to show up, perfect. So now I've changed the order or I've changed the sequence. It will be blue and then roll. So I really like those. There's some sound effects. Spiro does actually have a ton of sound effects. You can do loops with Spiro. There are lots of different blocks with Spiro. So definitely have fun and see what you come up with. What kind of challenges did you create? What kind of blocks did you use? We would love to hear all about those different challenges. And thank you for joining us today. Bye.